on this episode of The Breakthrough Show. We're connecting with our inner child as we enjoy some close-up magic from magician Chris Howitt. You'll learn all about his pursuit of his passion later in life and, of course, be blown away by some magic tricks. Later on, we've got a guy warming up the financial space with his refreshing outlook on personal development. Plus, you'll receive some investment tips and learn all about his brand new book, The Little Green Book of Note Investing. The alternative investment guy, Fred Moskowitz, is here. So stick around, all this and more, coming up today on The Breakthrough Show. moments when we have the opportunity to make a choice and what we choose has the potential to change our lives forever join us now for another inspired episode of the breakthrough and now please welcome the creator and host of the show jessica dugas What's up, everybody? Welcome back to The Breakthrough Show. I'm so excited to be here with you for another episode today. We have so much goodness packed into this episode for you. So coming up later on in the show, we're going to be talking with a new friend of mine, Fred Moskowitz, who is in the finance and investment world, which is something a little bit different than what we usually do here on the show or talk about. But I think you'll find we we go down the rabbit hole of investments really well, and it's, it worked out beautifully. So I'm really excited to welcome him on later on in the show. Um, but coming up first, we're going to be diving into a little bit of magic. And you guys know that this is something that's close to my heart. We've had my cousin Jimmy on the show before to do some magic for us. And um, Really excited to have a new guest on today. For anybody that's new to the show, my name is Jessica Dugas. I am the creator, producer, and host of The Breakthrough Show. And as I mentioned, super excited to be with you today. So our first guest is One Thing by Day and another by night. It's kind of, I, I told him it's kind of like a Clark Kent thing he's got going on. I'm really excited to welcome a magician to the show. Please welcome all the way from the UK, Chris Howitt to the show. Welcome, Chris. Hi, Jessica. How are you? I'm so good. I'm finally glad to sit down and do some magic with you. It's going to be amazing. I, it's still, I, as I tell my cousin, because he tells me nothing, yeah. He tell it's not fair. I'm I'm like family, and I'm, I you can't give me a little. But I but it's good because I'm still so fascinated by magic. Are you as well? Yes and no. It's a bit different. Once you kind of, I see it as the matrix. So you've got the red pill and the blue pill in front of you, and as soon as you start learning properly about magic, you can't go back. So it's like the matrix. As soon as you enter the matrix, you can't kind of leave it again and see life how it used to be. So. Yes. I can still enjoy it and still enjoy the entertainers and everything else, but you just can't look at it as if you didn't know or might be able to see or figure out what they're trying to do. Yes, very true. I can see that as well. Kind of like Fight Club. You just don't, you know, you're in it and then you don't talk about it. That's exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's a secret club. <laughs> yes, for sure. Well, I want to get into a little bit of your story, but first I would love for you to share with our audience something that's bringing you joy in your life today, Chris. Today? Was literally so it's a cold day in the UK, so um, one degree um, centigrade. I don't know why it's Fahrenheit. I do apologise, but it's cold. Um, and we've had the log burner on, and the cats are just lying in front of it, all curled up. We've got four cats, and three of them are curled up in front of the fire, and it's just lovely. It's nice, peaceful, warm, and they're happy. So that was like, my joyous moment of the day today. I love it. And I, I have to admit, I don't know the difference. Like my husband is from Canada, so he always opt, operated in centigrade as well. And then we're, I've always been Fahrenheit. So neither one of us knows what the other is talking about. <laughs> cold. It's cold. Let's put it that way. Yes. Yes. The cards are frosty good. when you wake up. <laughs> well, tell us, tell us a little bit about you, Chris. I mean, I know you're, you, you, just started doing magic a few years ago, right? And but and so haven't always been in that world, but have you always been interested in it? I've always liked magic. Um, so ever since I was a kid, I had a magic set as a kid. 
and I've always kind of been fascinated by it. But it wasn't until about 12 years ago, some we were out at a restaurant and they had a magician walking around and he'd done a trick with some elastic bands, which I'm going to show you some about it later on as well because it's my favourite trick. So he'd done um, some with elastic band, but one elastic band passed through another. And my mind was blown. And that kind of made me think, I want to learn how to do something like that. So I, I kind of searched everywhere and found out how to do it. And then probably about eight years after that, so only about four and a half years ago, my wife said, what do you want for your birthday? I went, I don't know, some magic tricks. And she took me to a magic shop. We spent about three, four hours there. The magician behind the counter showing us all these amazing, amazing effects um, and kind of said, what are you interested in? And I said, this, this, this. And he kind of showed us all this great stuff. And I went home, practiced. He told me where to go further. And yeah, so about, yeah, nearly three years ago now, I've then started to actually go out and perform for people who I didn't know, so strangers at charity events, weddings and stuff like that, and took the dive and love it. Absolutely love it. Now, the people need to know, is the, is magic somehow related to to your day job, to what you, you've done all along? No, no. So my day job at the time, I was a bank manager. So when I first kind of discovered the elastic band side of things, I was a bank manager. Um, and when I first started performing, I was a bank manager at the time as well. And now I'm actually an account manager for a motor factor company where they produce or they sell parts for cars. Mm, interesting. So it's it's always, I think, interesting to people who hear other people's story who who later in life sort of come into their passion. Could you see yourself just completely abandoning everything else that you've done up until this point and just going, doing magic full time? Hell yes. I would yes. love to. I, th I, th I think that would be, that's the dream. I think um, with lockdown, and especially in the UK where we haven't been able to perform pretty much since March, I've, you know, redone my close up walk around magic. So that's why I was doing a lot of, I've written a stage show. So it's a kind of a mind reading type stage show. So I've written a whole stage show, scripted it, and prepared that. So again, when lockdown's over, hopefully I can do that. And I'm just working on now, which I should have ready by the end of January, a children's show. Mm. So again, so my theory is that if I've got these three areas which I can kind of push myself into, I can then get more work from it and then look at doing it full time. Right. I love that. And, and, and I think it gives people so much hope because I think so many people, even me included, I've looked back at my life at some of the things that I dreamed of doing. And there's been moments where I felt like it's too late. Like I, I feel like I've the moments passed me by. And so I think when we hear stories about people like yourself who have kind of said, no, it's not, I'm going to take this and I'm going to run with it. It inspires people to, that it's never too late to go after the things that they're passionate about or dreams that they have. Um, do you find that people around you uh, are, are encouraging about this or are some people, are, are, are they like Chris now? Come on. <laughs> most, of most are encouraging. Um, again, I think like I said, as long as you've got that passion and that drive, you can do whatever you want to do. And it doesn't matter how what you've done in the past, your life experience. So, you know, I've always kind of banking is sales in the UK. I don't know what it's like in America, but banking is basically a sales type role. Um, so I've always kind of worked in sales, customer service and with people. So actually being a magician and interacting with people has that same thing. And, you know, it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't matter where you are in your life. If there's something you want to do and it's your drive and your goal and you're passionate about it, and it's obviously financially viable to do it, then why wouldn't you? Right. you, you we get one life, don't we? You know, you only live once and you're going to sit there when you're 60 in a retirement home just regretting what you haven't done. Yeah. Isn't it's not better to try it, fail, hopefully you don't fail, but but try it and kind of go out and smash it and do that rather than sit on your regrets. Yeah, yeah, very true. So why magic? Why magic as opposed to, like, what is it that keeps you passionate about it? Oh, the interactions with people. I think when you perform magic, um, it takes people back to their childhood. It reminds them of when they were a child that they can sit back and enjoy something in amazement. It's got the wow factor. It can be comedic. It can have emotional connections. However you want to kind of interact with your audience, you can do that. And what are some of your favorite magicians that you, people that you look up to? Um, Darren Brown, who I must have heard of Darren Brown before. He does, um, he's got Netflix special and stuff like that. He is a more of a kind of mentalist and so mind reading. He, um, he calls himself something like a mind illusionist. I think what he does, his program, his live shows are fantastic. 
And I think the way they're scripted and the magic in them, the journey takes you through the whole show mm. is amazing. Yeah. Um, in America, uh, you've got some of the best magicians, haven't you? you know, um, David Blaine was one of the first people to do street magic and the walk around stuff. Um, you've obviously got people like David Copperfield, who's been doing magic. I remember him on TV as a kid when he made the Statue of Liberty disappear and he walked through the Great Hall of China, uh, Great Wall of China and stuff like that. So I remember seeing Copperfield a lot when I was a kid and, you know, but all inspirational. But there's so many magicians about. Um, there literally are. And I mean, there's a lot of magicians which people wouldn't have heard of who are, unless you're local or in the magic industry, you know who they are, who are fantastic and have written some of the best books or, you know, some of the best performers. But again, they've kind of they've not gone mainstream. Right. So yeah, there's right. so many, and you know, I think admiring and watching any of them are kind of inspiration for what you want to do. So yeah, it's one of those um, lines of work where I think you can look at it and say, if somebody that's an aspiring magician could look at it and say, there's so many people. Like, why would I even go in there? But it's very, it's it reminds me so much of my cousin because you like you didn't know who he was but if you go into new england in the united states everybody knows who jimmy is and so it's like you kind of have this ability to carve out a little niche for yourself and a, a place and and a certain type of his he has a certain type of audience that is yeah. trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> what are i know you've mentioned the up close magic is that your favorite type of magic or do you have other favorites too i mean i love up close magic i think up close magic when it happens in your hands so when actually the spectator's involved and there's nowhere to hide with it as well. So it's directly in front of them. And for me, that creates a magical moment. Um, and I, I, I love that. I think that's what I started on and that's probably what I'll always do. The stage side of things, because it's kind of more of a mind reading, more of a kind of mentalist and kind of the, the influence inside of things. I like that because it's a completely different kind of way to the walk around and close up stuff. So those are my two favorite areas, I would say. Yeah, I think the the close up magic leaves leaves less room for skepticism because it's happening right there. And you know, you could watch something on TV and think, oh, well, it's edited or it's whatever. But when it's right in front of you, it's really hard to to say that can't be real because it happens right there, right? Yeah, yeah, and that's what I mean. Again, it takes them back, doesn't it? Because all of a sudden they're, they're going back to a time where things which shouldn't be possible happen. And it happens in their hands sometimes or, like I said, directly in front of them. So, yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's really easy for us as adults to to lose a little bit of that magic or belief in magic. And so when we go to a magic show or we see something like that happen right in front of us, it can help us tap back into something in our childhood, which ultimately leads us to more creativity and, and, and a better mindset sometimes because kids are, kids are so resilient and so, you know, just in their own world and not worried so much about the outside things like we are as adults. And it's nice to tap back into that sometimes. So thank you for providing that to people. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And I think especially with what's going on in the world at the moment, um, I think, you know, for me on my social media side of things, uh, back in May, the end of May, I did 100 days of magic videos. Mm. So every day for 100 days, I've done a video every day. They're only about a minute to a minute and a half long. But again, it was just to people are sat at home rather than working in the UK. I don't know what lockdown, or like we said earlier, different states in America. But in the UK, we were sat at home. We weren't meant to go out unless we had to go shopping or essential work. Right. So you're sat at home, you've got the same things on TV, and it was just to provide a little bit of a break. So yeah, but for 100 days in a row, just something for them to help, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and I did. I mean, I remember in, several months ago, and there were people, there were magicians doing it, there were singers that were like 100, you know, 100 songs, and you know, there were other people doing different things. But it not only gave them an opportunity and you an opportunity to get yourselves out there, but also provided entertainment in, in a time that I think has been very uncertain for most of humanity um, and just wondering what's going on. And anytime we can get out of that for just a minute and have some fun, I think is, is a benefit. Oh, helps. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So you're going to do some magic for us today and up yes. close magic. So we're all going to be blown away and stunned <laughs> and we're very excited. Um, we're going to do one now for you. And then uh, we'll come back after uh, we chat with Fred and do a little bit more. So what are you going to share with us first, Chris? So um, I'm going to do a close-up routine for you first. So um, it's a card trick. So I've just got a small pack of cards. So that's just 
five cards are out, you can see that. Mm -hmm. And there's a memory test. So all you've got to do is remember what the cards look like, the colour and the design, and what the other side looks like, if you can see that. Okay. Yeah? So you've got that, yeah? So you remember what the first card looked like, yeah? Yes. It was the eight of clubs, yeah? Do you remember that one? No? No? What about the rest of them? <laughs> they were... What about the backs? Do you remember what the backs were like? <laughs> Those were not them. <laughs> it's, it just goes to show why you should never play poker with a magician. Yes, very true. <laughs> <laughs> a lesson learned. See, you not only got a trick here, people, you have a tip for life. <laughs> That's what oh, yeah, have. never. <laughs> So much fun. All right. We're going to um, take a break really quick and then we're going to talk to Fred and you'll come back at the end and do some more for us, Chris. Yep. All right. We'll be back in just a minute for more of the breakthrough show. What's up, everyone? It's Jessica here, your host of the Project Joy podcast and, of course, the Breakthrough Show. I want to take a moment and thank all of our supporters here at the show. With your financial support, we are able to expand the show and reach more people with the hopes of inspiring our audience members to change their lives for the better and know they are supported during time to breakthrough. We welcome our one-time contributions to our show by sending a PayPal to business at thebreakthroughshow.com or you can join us at patreon.com slash the breakthrough show where you'll be rewarded for your regular contribution with things like our exclusive community soul connection collective merchandise discounts fun shout outs on the show and more on behalf of everyone here at the breakthrough show and its network we thank you for your generous support Welcome back to the breakthrough show. You know, one of my favorite things about the show is that throughout the, the last five seasons, we've continued to host people from all different walks of life, from all different entrepreneurial backgrounds, from all different upbringings and all of that. And, and what I love is that we can bring all of these people together and really see the similarities between what we want as humans and of course the breakthroughs that we have in our lives. So it's not very often that we have someone from the finance world coming on the show, but that sure is what we have today. My special guest wears many hats. He's an entrepreneur, he's a speaker, he's an investor, and now he is an author as well. Please welcome the alternative investment guide to the show, Fred Moskowitz. Fred, welcome. Hello, Jessica. Thank you for having me on your show. I'm so excited for our conversation today. Absolutely. Well, I would love for you to start out by sharing with everyone what's something that's bringing you joy in your life today. Something that's bringing me joy in my life today, it seems that I've been uh, more and more just getting connecting with amazing people, right? Especially uh, in this time of the pandemic where Everything is moving to online. Uh, it just seems like having more and more conversations uh, with with people and connecting on on such a deeper level. It's been quite amazing, and uh, that really is uh, a, a source of, of tremendous satisfaction for me. I I really enjoy it. I'm very. Uh, very passionate about speaking with other people, about other investors, learning about them. Uh, people have some amazing stories and experience to share. And so that's been been fantastic. Mm, I love that. And, I, and I've mentioned this several times on the show before where, you know, the, the computer has really given me the opportunity to connect with other people that are like me because I don't have a big circle local to me here, especially now that we just moved and like I might know two neighbors if that. Um, it's been a very strange time to move during the pandemic because it's like nobody wants to come near you and meet you like they would and borrow a cup of sugar and all of that. So, um, you know, it's been an interesting time, but I love the opportunity that we have to connect with each other um, from so far away and create relationships. And so I love that that's something that brings you joy as well. Um, as I mentioned, we don't often have people on the show who are in the finance background and like you are investments and all of that. And it's something that fascinates me. And I think because um, one, because I was really good at math when I was in school, but two, because I don't understand any of it. And I feel like I need to know all the things. So <laughs> I 
So I'm excited to dive a little bit into this topic today. But as you know, the focus of this show is really on the breakthrough moments that change our life. Have you always been in investments and take us back a little bit to maybe when things were different in your life and you weren't the the amazing uh, alternative investment guy that you are today? Yes. Uh, I started out uh, actually uh, as an engineer. I was a computer engineer. I had a very uh, successful career. And uh, I'll share with you a story. Uh, there was a time where I, I found myself sitting sitting in a chair on the beach. I was in northeastern Brazil, um, and it was in the middle of summer there, and we had the blazing hot sun just beating down on warming my skin. I was spending the whole afternoon just playing my guitar, sitting in that chair, practicing bossa nova rhythms. And the whole reason I was there is that I was coming down from an aftershock, the aftershock of having lived through the bursting of the dot-com bubble, mm -hmm. followed by 9-11. And uh, I, at the time, I was a computer engineer working at a tech startup that had just imploded and I lost my job. Mm -hmm. And actually, it was not the first time that I had gone through that experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I realized was that I had been spending years of my life building someone else's dream instead of building my own. And I did a lot of soul searching during those days on the beach. And it was during that time where I, I came to the realization that I needed to, to have other sources of income so that I would not be solely dependent on the paycheck for my job. And so I use that experience to fuel an amazing transformation for me in my life and my career. And I, accepted full responsibility for creating the life that I wanted. Mm, I love that. And, and I think it's so important because we, I think it can be easy for us as humans to quickly point the finger at outside circumstances or outside people and, and say, well, if this wasn't the case, then I would be here, or I would be able to make different choices or something like that. And so I love that you really got in touch with your, you being at the helm of your life and making those changes. Um, and now, you know, when we talked initial, initially, um, I told you that we were going to have this conversation about the fact that you had this breakthrough moment on a beautiful beach in Brazil. And some of us have not had that lovely background to break through. <laughs> and so we all just need to take a moment of the jealousy that we are experiencing right now <laughs> that you've had, that you were able to have that. But I imagine, like, I just picture it being such, um, you know, playing, I'm a music person too, and I play the guitar as well. And just being able to like, be in your music and be in this beautiful environment, I imagine that it, 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 it provided some level of inspiration to you. Is that, is that how you experienced it? Yes, it did. Absolutely. And another aspect of that is, and, and this is something I found that sometimes you need to basically eject yourself out of your environment and get somewhere completely different. And that gives you a chance to, to focus and do some, have some serious thinking time. And that thinking time is so valuable because you have no distractions. You have nothing else to do, nowhere to be. And you can really get clear on decisions you need to make, things you want to do, goals, dreams you want to pursue, mm -hmm. right? And you don't have to be, be on the beach. You can get, get out into nature, whether that means go out for a hike in the woods for a couple of hours or go backpacking for a couple of days alone, right? But being alone is, is certainly a part of it. Uh, some people go on these retreats that uh, are run by uh, others that are 
that have have things set up for you mm-hmm. and makes it a little easier. But you you have to find find what works for you. But the main detail is you got to eject yourself out of your environment, mm-hmm. uh, whether that's for thirty minutes or for three hours or three days. However, however it can be, whatever your life uh, allows for. But seek to do that. Right. Seek to do that. Maybe it's 30 minutes to go out for a quiet walk early in the morning when there's no one around and no one with you and you have some peaceful time to think and and ponder and get clear on on what it is you want to achieve. Right. It sounds like the the air of intentionality and that was my my word that I chose for myself for 2020 was intentional and really putting thought behind what I do because I tend to be a very very much on a whim kind of person and mm-hmm. it's like oh that looks good let's go do that and while there's value in that and being able to just kind of go with the flow I also wanted to say okay yes go do that but what is what is my what is my reason for doing it what is what is going to what about doing this is going to bring me to that next level and and to that next step? So being so taking yourself out of that out of the situations and taking that time for yourself really feels like that um, theme of intentionality of saying I'm going to use this time for me to figure it out and and know what I need to do to move forward. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And and like I said earlier. There's no wrong, there's no wrong answer. It, it looks different for everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, for some people, it might be sitting quietly in your living room in the morning when everyone else is asleep in your right. house, and you're, you're starting a journaling practice, mm-hmm. right? And and writing down your your thoughts. Uh, that that could be how you start, right? But it all comes from taking that first step, setting the intention and starting a routine, starting habits like that, um, that really will build momentum for you over time. Mm. What what were some of your favorite tools um, to kind of help yourself move forward? I know that music is important to you to kind of um, create a uh, an inspirational space for yourself, and and I know that music has always been such an amazing outlet for me just to express myself, and um, and and it's fun, and it's en- it's enjoy uh, it brings me in uh, joy. So, what are some of the other tools that you've that you've enjoyed to help you kind of stay balanced and and moving forward and, and enjoying your time and figuring it out what you needed to do? Oh, wow. That's, that's such a juicy question. (laughs) Uh, there's so many, so many things. Uh, so first, first and foremost, relationships is Mm. huge, right? Look at the people that you spend time with the people that you surround yourself with. And think, think about that. Who are the people that you've spent the most time with over the past week or over the past month, right? If you use a, a calendar, pull up your calendar and look at it, both from a business perspective as well as uh, social and, and personal. Look at, look at the people you're spending the most time with. This is something, uh, an idea I, I learned from uh, the famous – uh, development speaker, Jim Rohn, right? And he said this, you become the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. And what I found is that that is so true mm-hmm. in so many different aspects of life, because the people that are around you, they're either going to pull you up to where they are or drag you down to where they are. Right. And it happens at a subconscious level, not intentional. It just happens. And so if you're mindful about who the people are that you're spending time with, that's going to impact you in a mm. huge way. So those relationships, that that's really it's the huge. main thing. It, it is. Does that resonate with you, Jessica? Absolutely. And, and, you know, I, so funny that you brought that up because when I heard that before, I thought to myself, um, I have six children. So what exactly does that make me? But 
when I look at this a little bit closer, because they're the ones that I spend the most time with throughout mm-hmm. the day. And um, I, I tend to be a very playful person. I joke around a lot. I, um, I, I tend to, to be kind of teetering the line of naive where I can see, still see the wonder in things. And so I see that of it being such a, I used to joke around about it, about, well, I guess that means I'm childish, but I can see so many positive things of them being the ones that I surround myself with all of the time, being their mom. And um, I pick up a lot of that childhood wonder, I think. And and I think that now that I'm thinking about it, that makes me pretty special, darn it. <laughs> It makes you pretty special. Absolutely. It does. And I would bet that if you sit back and take it all in, Mm -hmm. aren't you learning just as much from them as they are from you? Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) It's insane. And, and, you know, my youngest one is four and, but she tries so hard to keep up with the older ones that she does not need me. She's like, she, she has stopped calling me mommy. She calls me ma. And I'm like, can you just stop? Can you not do this anymore? Um, so it's always it's always fun. But I really, really do that that whole piece about relationships has been so key for me as well. And really um creating boundaries for myself around the relationships that were not serving me. Um yeah. and also uh welcoming in learning to trust a little bit more and welcoming in new relationships of people who, who get me and who, um, you know, are going to encourage me to grow instead of continually pulling me back because that's not what they've always done. Absolutely. Absolutely. You want to be around others that are going to encourage you to grow. So let's look at, at this perspective, right? With, we have the pandemic going on. We can't really, meet with people right Right. now in person. So what do you do, right? Well, getting back to tools, look at this amazing technology we're using, right? We're speaking on the Zoom platform. Well, if you go look online at meetups and meetings, guess what? You don't have to go to the meeting or meetup that's in your local town. You can go to meetups over Zoom anywhere, all over the country. You couldn't, you, you weren't doing that before. So why not attend meetups that are across the country or in another, in another country even, and what kind of people will you get to meet and expose, be exposed to and build relationships with? It just opens up all of these other possibilities. Mm -hmm. So that's another tool that instead of sitting at home, feeling bad, that you're isolated and you can't see people. No, absolutely not. You can see people right. any every day of the week if you wanted to. Absolutely. Well, I also want to get into some of the work that you do today because like I said, it fascinates me for those two reasons because I've always enjoyed math. So anything with, with numbers and money and finances uh, fascinates me, but I also know nothing and <laughs> about that world. And so it's fascinating to me for, for that that reason as well. How did you, when you, when you made the decision to go into this line of work, were you always interested in this sort of thing or did it kind of, how did it happen? It really came out of a desire to generate income for myself and uh, generating income, not from working, but from investments. So in other words, I was interested in investing, making investments that would pay an income to me. So that way um, that income would happen, whether I was working or not on an ongoing basis. And um, most of the traditional investments that you find, like the Wall Street products, for instance, mutual funds and stocks, they are not going to pay you an in- income on an ongoing basis. That, mm-hmm. That's not how they work. So you have to get into uh, what I call alternative investments, which is a, a separate class uh, 
class of investments. This involves things like investing in real estate, investing in businesses, investing in notes and mortgages, which is where my business focus is. Those are things where you invest you invest your, your money, your capital. Most of the time, the actual the capital is actually secured or backed by a tangible asset. And uh, it generates income. It pays you on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. So there may be appreciation in that asset or in that real estate that that can happen in in the future, especially if you have a longer term outlook. But why not get paid while you wait as well? That that's the the main thing, and that's what uh, what really was appealing to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you do you, to do to get involved with something like that? Do you have to have a lot of money to invest already? Like, do you have to have? I think sometimes people think, well, I've got to have like you know hundreds of thousands of dollars in order to be able to start doing investments. Is that is that true, or what's your take on that? No, it, it's not true. Everyone starts from somewhere, mm-hmm. right? And certainly, uh, it depends on what what it is you're investing in. But let's say for someone that's starting out, someone just getting started in their career, everyone has the ability to save save money and and learn and invest on an ongoing basis and whether that's uh, investing in real estate uh, there's so many, so many techniques that, that can be used Um, a real common, common thing that I I see all the time is people buying a rental property, right? Mm. People buy rental property and hold it, for long term, this is not sexy. This is not what you're <laughs> seeing on HGTV with house flipping. And that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about buying buying a, pro- a house in a, located in a good area where you're going to have good tenants, and you have that as as a rental property. And every anyone can do this. Yeah. Right. There's no you. You don't have to wait for some kind of permission sh- slip to come down from the divine up <laughs> above or anything like that. Right. <laughs> for some people, it might be that you you bought a, a star house for yourself to live in, and then you moved because you needed something bigger. Uh, well, instead of selling that house, why not keep it and turn it into a rental property? There's some amazing benefits, our government actually provides these huge incentives mm. to to U.S. citizens to create housing. Um, and it's in the tax code. Um, there's some amazing tax benefits to owning real estate and operating it as a rental property. I didn't which know help- that. Oh yeah, absolutely. They, they, they really are uh, f- owning investment real estate, you you can make money four ways from this. Mm -hmm. The first way is through uh, through the the cash flow, the monthly income. And what that is is basically how much income you have, you subtract all of your expenses, your ongoing expenses, and then the profit left over, that's your your monthly cash flow. Mm -hmm. The next one is your uh your loan amortization. So if you buy the property with financing, which most people do every month, a portion of your mortgage payment goes down to pay down the loan balance. Mm -hmm. So that's happening on an ongoing basis, but that's being paid by the rental income, not by you. Right. Right. So every month your loan balance goes down. That's the amortization. Then the third the third way is through your tax benefits that you get, which um, uh, now I'm not a tax professional. I'm not a CPA, but uh, anyone that does this is entitled to uh, tax benefits, which help reduce the amount of taxes you pay mm-hmm. right on your tax return. Right. And then the, the last and final piece is appreciation, which 
is not guaranteed, but I will tell you that if you own real estate for the long term, like more than 10 years, then more likely than not, the value of that property is going to increase over time. Right. And so those are the four ways which uh, which you can benefit from owning real estate. Um, I also want to get into really quickly that you have just become an author and have an amazing book that by the time this comes out, it will be out and out there for everybody. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. The The book is called The Little Green Book of Node Investing. And this is really a, a practical guide for people that want to learn about investing in notes and mortgages and learning about how your investment is protected by a tangible asset and uh, how to manage them, how to evaluate them. And uh, a lot of the, a lot of the benefits and um, I, I, People, a lot of people come to me with similar questions like you're asking, Jessica, and it's all around how to get started. This is such a uh, new territory for me. I don't know where to start. Well, there, there's really a couple ways because if you want to really get involved in, in node investing, you can buy notes, own them. You can even own, own notes in your retirement account. In your IRA account, there's all type of strategies that you can learn about, and I cover these in the book. But also, you can you can invest in note funds, and what note funds are basically uh, there's a team managing managing all the notes. They go out and find them, and evaluate them, analyze them, and buy them, and they raise capital from investors. So that investors can benefit from that expertise and experience in and have a, a passive income mm-hmm. from that investment. So those are all the different topics that um, that I get into in the book. And it's really uh, great as a starting point to learn about this amazing, amazing investment class that uh, everyone knows about mortgages, right? And right. most people have... Uh, use them to buy their own house. But a lot of folks don't know that in individual investors, just like people like you and I can own mortgages. And in effect, what you're doing is instead of being the one making the monthly payments, well, what do you think it's like to be the one receiving those monthly payments and you're (laughs) stepping across the aisle and being in the shoes of the bank, basically. I agree. So tell everybody, Fred, where they can find you. Yes, thank you. You can find me by visiting my website, which is fredmoskowitz.com and connecting with me there. And another way is by texting the word note and O T E to the number four, seven, one, seven, seven, and then following the prompts. And by doing that, uh, you'll be able to get information about my book. Uh, I also have a special report available that I'm going to offer to all the listeners of your podcast that if you connect with me either through uh, my website or by texting the word note to 47177, I'll send out a free special report on note investing to you. I love that. And so everybody can, there's no excuses now. You don't even have to go and get the book immediately. You can get your free report immediately and get started. Um, I, I want to thank you so much for being such a warm person and being so open and sharing your story and sharing information with our audience. Well, Fred, I have taken an entire page of notes, so that means it's time to go <laughs> It has been such a pleasure having you on the Breakthrough Show today. I thank you so much for your time and being here with me today, Fred. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Jessica. This has been such a a great conversation, and I appreciate the opportunity for coming on to your program. Absolutely. All right, guys, we're going to be back in just a minute for more of the Breakthrough Show. Breakthroughs are about more than you might think. They're about discovering who you are, digging deep, reaching to the core of your soul. They're about healing, healing yourself, understanding your beliefs, creating a ripple effect. 
And it's not just those initial moments that matter. It's about using them to bring more joy into our own lives and the lives of others. It's about having fun, letting loose, enjoying every moment life has to offer. It's about finding a safe space. It's about creating connection. Join us each and every month for exclusive programming where we invite you to go beyond the breakthrough. So we ask you, are you ready? We'll see you online at thebreakthroughshow.com. Welcome back to The Breakthrough Show. I want to give a big thank you to our guest today, Fred Moskowitz. And we're back now with my new friend, Chris Howitt from over in the UK, who is going to continue to do some magic for us and blow our minds here on The Breakthrough Show. Um, Chris, what do you have up for us next? Well, I know that this is a podcast as well as obviously streamed on video. So I'm going to do something which hopefully people who are listening should work for them as well. So we're going to try on you. But obviously, if you're listening at home, you should be able to try this as well. So what I want you to do, so you've got a deck of cards. So you've got, don't think about the suit, but think about the card itself. So you've got ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king. Okay? I want you to think of one of the values for me. Okay? And keep it in your head. Have you got one? Yep. Okay. So if you've chose a picture card, I want you to change it to a number card. And if you chose a number card, I want you to change it to a picture card. Okay. Done that? Excellent. So if you're thinking of a odd number, change it to an even number. And if you're thinking of a male picture card, so king or queen, uh, king or jack, change it to a female picture card. Okay. Okay. Done that? Now, there's some cards which are just associated with other cards. So if you would say an ace, you would think of the ace of spades. Mm -hmm. So the card you're thinking of at the moment, is there a suit which is situated or kind of linked to that card? Yes. Okay. Now, this works 90% of the time with a suit. So I've got one card held in front of me at the moment, yes? Okay, yes. What card are you thinking of? Queen of Hearts. Get out. <laughs> so good. And like I said, that will work as well listening. So I think it's a really, really good one to do kind of online and everything else. But yeah. Stop it. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. It, see, it still, it blows my mind. I'm like, how do you know these things? Because you're psychic, Chris. I know, it's crazy, isn't it? Oh, my gosh. All right, give us another one. Let's do another one. So, as I said, the one the trick which got me into magic was someone using the lasso band, okay? So I've got my wedding ring here. And obviously, wedding ring, I've been married 10 years this year. So it's been for a lot, okay? Us too, yay. Yeah. So the wedding ring, what happens is, obviously, it goes through all your ups in life, but it also goes through all your downs as well. just with the power of your mind. But the great thing is about a wedding ring and actually any ring or any kind of symbol of love you have, just make sure that's up there, but obviously the ring's on the band, yeah? Yes. But when you do it, there's nothing but love can't get through. And I just think that's an amazing. That's awesome. That's awesome. It's so, do you do that one at weddings for people? I can see. I do that one at weddings, um, walk around. Like I said, the original trick is done with two elastic bands and you kind of hold the elastic bands and make them kind of pass through that way. Right. But I just, I like the fact that, you know, part of how I see magic for me personally is from moving a magic trick to a magic effect. So something which has got a more emotional tie into it. It's harder to do via Zoom and online and stuff like that and podcasts, but it's, when you're actually performing, going out and doing a couple of tricks, some people can do. I'm not saying anyone can do, but some people can do. But actually getting that connection and moving magic from just performing to actually having a connection with someone is how I feel magic should be moved on in the world. That's my personal opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it's so it's so good. And with the one that you did with the cards um, or the the imagining the cards, the more of the mentalist, are you getting into doing more of that yourself now? 
I again, I think it depends on the media and the situation. I do like when I'm doing my walk around, I do do a mixture of normal kind of sleight of hand and magic and also mind reading magic. It just depends on the audience. You can feel the table. So the first, that, the ones where the card changes, that's my first trick. That's my kind of introduction. Hi, I'm Chris, a magician. How are you doing? It's a memory test, guys. You know, remember what you see, then right in front of them, they change. Yeah. And then you can judge by there whether they like that kind of stuff or whether you're going to do more card stuff or how they want it done. But it's just, you know, varying and, you know, playing to the audience, isn't it? Sometimes yeah. I think, with sometimes a walk around a charity event and stuff like that, you're limited on the number of tables and how much time you have. Mm. So you've got to try to get what you can in to that time. So if you've got there for an hour and a half, you've got 90 tables, you've only got 10 minutes per table. Right, right. So you've got have to then ever, kind of... Have you ever done a trick and it's completely bombed, like it hasn't worked out? Yeah. So What, what not, happens? <laughs> so, so I was doing the elastic band. So where the last band, I had two last bands like this. And they obviously can't go through, but if you watch slowly, they pass through through each other. I was doing that, and one of the last band flipped off my finger and landed right on the gentleman next to me's bold patch. Yeah. And so, and I just kind of, I, I turned around to the table, I looked and went, oh, that's magic, and just picked it up and carried on. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes it does go wrong. You might drop a card or, you know, you might get someone to choose a card, and when you try to find it, it's the wrong card. But, you know, you, again, Providing you've been performing for a little bit or you've done it before, you know what you're going to do. And you can kind of go, oh, what was your card? Oh, it was actually this card. Okay, so then you do something else with that card, make it more magical and appear. And So much joy out of having you on the show today, Chris. Um, thank you so much. You know, we have so many different people come on the show that are in very serious lines of work and, you know, changing our lives and all of that. And But I just continue to believe that we can change lives through the arts, through magic, through music, through movies, through all of these different forms of entertainment. And so I just, I thank you just as much as I thank everyone else for the work that you're doing in the world to provide a space for people to, to experience joy and have more fun in their lives. Well, thank you for having me on. It's been great. Absolutely. Well, tell everybody, Chris, where they can find you and what you have coming up next. So I'm on all social media platforms at Chris Howitz Magic. Um, How it's spelled with one T, um, just in case, because people do spell with two. And so that would be Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, but I don't tweet much, TikTok as well. So ooh, ooh, everywhere you can kind of look, I'll be there. Also coming up, I do a lot of, um, with everything going on at the moment, virtual kind of shows. So I'm always available to be booked for virtual shows. I do some of them with some of my friends who are also mind readers and magicians as well. So you might get two for the price of one, depending on how long you want it. So that's always available. And then obviously after everything gets back to normal, I'll be out performing close up face to face as I kind of prefer. <laughs> Yeah, so we need you to come over to the U.S. when the borders are back open and do some shows over here. That'll be fun. That'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris, thank you so much for being here today. Everybody, please make sure that you check out the show notes for all the information where you can find Chris and connect with him and see, of course, some more of his amazing magic tricks. Chris, thank you so much for being here. Special thank you to our amazing guest today, magician Chris Howitt, and of course, our note investor, Fred Moskowitz. Until next week, guys, I'm your host, Jessica Dugas. Make every day a great day for a breakthrough. We'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Breakthrough. Please visit our website at www.thebreakthroughshow.com and be sure to join our After the Breakthrough community powered by Patreon. We look forward to seeing you next week. Same time, same place for another inspiring episode.